If we take it away with our left hand, our left hand will have a tendency of pushing your club away from the ball, up and out, and that's going to create a loop. If you watch, my left hand will go up here. The club head's going outside the line, and when you get up here, you've only got one way to go, and that's inside. When you come back inside the line, you're coming into this position, and you'll either hit a straight block or a big pull hook. So take our grip without a golf club, and you can practice in front of the mirror by pushing your left elbow away from the target. If you push your left elbow away, you see what happens. I'm not thinking about my hands or my wrists or my shoulders or my legs or anything. Push your left elbow away, you see what happens to your shoulders? Your shoulders start to move. And you, it's almost impossible to miss that first 18 inches. You can't pick the club up. You can't take it on the outside of the line. You won't pull it on the inside of the line because your elbow is going straight back. You're eliminating a lot of variables. You're eliminating your wrist. You're eliminating your, your leg motion that can sometimes start too early for a lot of players. Think of your left elbow. The left elbow away from the target, first 18 inches, and then everything else goes together. You get to a point where your shoulders turn, your hips must turn with your shoulders. Simple little thing, left elbow away from the target during your takeaway for the first 18 inches, bang, straight down the line. Backswing is really the extension of the takeaway. Remember we talked about the first 18 inches, which is a very crucial part of the game? Well, the backswing is a continuation of that. If you start off with the correct address position with the ball position in the right place, and you push your left elbow away from the target for that first 18 inches, just let it keep going. Let it keep going, just keep pushing that elbow back, 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 and all of a sudden your body's gonna rotate. You're gonna rotate around the base of your spine. It is the only point really in the whole goal swing of your body that doesn't move. That point should stay in the same place. As I come down to the downswing, go through, it's staying in the same place. It really doesn't move like the rest of your body. It stays basically in the same position. So when we take our backswing, we're trying to think about that. We're trying to swing around the base of our spine. So you take it away with your left elbow, you go back, 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 turn your body around, and all of a sudden you get to a point where everything wants to rotate. And that rotation is gonna be turning around the base of your spine, you get to the top of your swing. I haven't done anything. I haven't cocked my wrist. I haven't set them too early. I haven't set them too late. Because in your backswing, you can't set them too late. Let me show you down the line here. As you take the club away, you keep going back, back, back. You, something's going to give, and sooner or later, your wrists are going to release, and they're going to cock automatically. This business about doing an early cock doesn't really work well. Because what happens, if you start getting back here, set your wrist early, you have eliminated your extension of your golf swing and your extension in your backswing is what generates your power. So forget early cock wrists, right? Just take the club head away, shoulders turning around your body, and they're going to automatically cock when you get to the top. Now, a good little point you want to think about, and again, it's something I do quite a lot on the golf course, is if I want to hit the ball that little bit extra further, generate that little more club head speed, what I do, and I call it the RPB shot, which is right pocket back, all you do is just let your arms hang, and as you stand there, just push your right hip away, okay? Right hip back. See, you notice how my hips are turning automatically? I'm getting full rotation around the base of my spine, and the lower part of my back is already turning. And even my top part is very difficult to push them back without getting some sort of shoulder movement. So just get your right pocket back, RPB. Stand there, no club in your hand, push that back. Now, one thing you mustn't do is when you do that, is straighten your right knee. If your right knee stiffens up, you're going to be in big trouble. Keep the flex in your knees all the way through your backswing. If that knee flex stays the same, you're going to be in business.
downswing starts by the leadership of your legs, and that is very crucial, because if you get your leg drive going in the right direction, we're going to create power and we're going to create direction. And that is the key to driving golf. Well, a lot of people say you putt for dough and drive for show. Unless you get the ball in play, you're not going to be able to putt, because you're either going to lose it in the water or the trees or whatever. So we've got to get the downswing right to get the ball going in the correct direction. So when you get to the top of your swing, your first motion is drive with the right knee. I'm going to be having 95% of the weight on my right side. Now, this is very important because on your downswing, you've got to get that 95% of the weight from your right side to your left side. This is where we're going to generate most of our power. Obviously, the weight transference and pulling that weight across and getting it onto your left side is going to pull the club down very quickly. The quicker you get the club coming down, obviously, the more club head speed you generate, the further the ball is going to go. So just think, on your way back, on your backswing, Get that weight onto your right side. We talked about that with the RPB. So on your downswing now, as I said, the leadership of your right knee, just bring that down. Now you're getting that weight turned onto your left side. So just before impact, now I've got 95% of the weight on my left side. So the quicker you get that weight from one side to the other, the further you're going to hit it. So all you do is just get there, think of your target. When we talked about our alignment, think of your target. You got that in your mind. When you're on the tee, for example, hitting a driver, Pick out an object in the distance, like a tree or a house or a cloud if the wind's not blowing too fast. And uh, just pick that out, put that in your mind, get into your position, get your nice smooth rhythm, 50-50 balance at a dress position, and just think a nice fluid motion. And we get the ball in play, and now we can have a shot at making a birdie. Well, congratulations to you. You got your tee shot perfect in the middle of the fairway. What do you do now? Approach shot, very key part of the game. We've got to get the ball in play, and we're going to get it in play by hitting the green. Every time you're walking down the fairway, the last 30 or 40 yards before you get to the shot, take in the elements. Take in the way the green's situated. Take in where the flag's situated. Have a look at the terrain. Understand the terrain. Where not to miss the shot. If the flag is or the trouble's at the back of the green and there's a little bit of leeway in front, also play to your bailout position. Don't try and do anything that's unnatural to you. Play within yourself. So right here now we've got a nice smooth, for, for my shot, it's a nice smooth 8-iron shot. And that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a nice full swing and control. Keep control of your golf swing. I'm not going to try and force it. And I'm going to keep the ball in play. That's exactly what I want you to do. Feel your way. Now that I've hit the 8-iron, I'd like to hit a 2-iron. Let me just get the 2-iron. I want to show you one significance difference. Not only is the loft difference and the lie different, but look at the length. We've got nearly 4 inches difference to play with. Now, that 4 inches is going to make a big different play in our swing. Our control of our swing wants to be the same. The full swing wants to be the same. And that's where we, this is going to get a little bit more awkward for you, because the longer the club, the more distance between you and the club head or you and the ball. The more distance there is, the greater club head speed. Now, this is where the distance comes into effect. An 8-iron has obviously got a lot more loft than a 2-iron. So therefore, if you can control your swing, maintain the same rhythm and same tempo throughout your whole swing, your 2-iron shot should be the same as your 8-iron shot. Your goal swing is going to be the same. Again, a little bit of a change. Ball position is going to be exactly the same, but the width of your stance is going to be a little bit wider. And the why, why the, we have to widen our stance a little bit is to compensate for that extra length. The longer the club, the more you have to balance yourself. The shorter the club, the more we can control it. We don't have to overpower it as much. So with the two iron, ball position the same as the eight iron, but just move your right foot maybe an inch further away and you'll find your balance is going to be so much easier. And remember, don't try with the longer irons to get them airborne. The loft of the golf club is going to do that for you. Just go ahead and swing it. Don't be scared of it. The less loft on the club, it's just as easy to get it airborne as it is an eight iron. So just take your normal address position, look down your line, 
Nice, full, firm swing. One other final piece of advice. When you're walking to your ball and you're summarizing the situation, always trust your first impressions or your first instinct on what club to hit. Your eyes will tell you the distance, so trust it. Now I'm going to go ahead and make that birdie. Okay, now we come to the interesting part about the game of golf, the art of maneuvering the golf ball. Remember, if you hook the ball into the trees, you can hook it out. If you slice it in the trees, you can slice it out as well. So no matter where you are on the golf course, you can get yourself out of trouble just by learning the art of maneuvering the golf ball. Now to maneuver the golf ball, you have to be able to spin it. Now to spin it, what we're going to do here is demonstrate with the basketball two different colors to show you the spin on a left to right shot or a right to left shot. So let's talk about the spin. You see this uh, vertical line right here? That's on an imaginary plane from your seat in your lounge room, through your television set, straight down to the flag. Right, so there's that imaginary line running down there, right through there. Now, we just imagine there's a tree right in front of us, 30, 40 feet away, and we have to hook the ball around the tree. What have we got to do? We got to impart a right to left spin on it. Right to left, this motion. All right, so we're going to have to get the ball turning. Now, remember, the game of golf is a game of opposites. To get the ball to go left, we've got to hit it right to get that spin. Vice versa, to get the ball to go right, we've got to hit it left. So imagine, here's the palm of my hand, golf club. Whatever golf club it is, the imaginary line again, straight through the vertical line on this basketball, that my palm of my hand is a golf club coming through the inside of the line. Keep that imaginary line in your mind now. The palm of my hand is coming through the inside of the line. It's going to strike the basketball or the golf ball, this position here, and it's going to spin it this way. Right to left spin. It's going to hit it. The ball is going to go out to the right and hook back with the spin. OK? Now, that's the simplest way you can relate hand-eye coordination to the golf club on the ball to hook it. Obviously, now it's the opposite for a slice. Vertical line, imaginary plane through the ball, but this time, instead of coming on the inside of the line, we want to come from the outside across the ball. So our plane of our golf club is coming down this way, across the plane of your imaginary plane, strike the ball here, and it's going to impart a left or right spin this way. I think that's a very simple thing for you to think of if you hit it in the trees, because now, you're going to be able to relate the spin of the ball to the direction. So good luck with your slices and hooks. Now, what I'm going to do now is let's forget about this basketball. I'm going to go show you the real thing. One thing we've got to talk about now is if you're going to hit a left to right shot or a right to left shot, there's going to be a lot of variations in yardages. Now we're going to get into the technical side of it, and I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible for you. You know, a lot of people tell you, well, if you're going to hook the ball, you've got to change your grip. You know, now change your grip means to get it stronger. Remember the grip sequence? Get your left hand pointing to the sky. You're going to hook it because the club face is going to close. Well, I don't necessarily agree with this. Remember, again, I use the word repetition. That's what we want to keep, repetition. The same golf swing for every shot, but let the club face do the work. That's what I like to do. I will, so what I do is I maintain my same grip. You know, for whatever shot I want. You see the tree here, I want to hook it around this tree. The flag is almost, well, just right of the tree trunk there. So what I'm going to do, now watch closely and try and understand this, because it, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. Put your club face where you want the ball to finish, so the club face is going to be on the target, the flag. So you see my club face down there? It's lined up to the flag. Now without changing or doing anything to my grip or my stance, I'm going to take my normal grip, but this time 
I'm going to aim my body at the right-hand chimney up there. Pick out a point to aim at with your body because you want to get yourself around the object you're trying to get away from. So this time, I'm going to think of the chimney. So my club face is going to remain where I want the ball to finish. I want my body to take the club face around the object that I'm trying to get around. So I'm, all I do now is look at the chimney. So now, if you notice, my club face has stayed the same. My body is aiming at the chimney. Now, can you understand what's going to happen? I haven't changed a thing with my grip, my stance, or my swing. The club face is going to impart all the right to left spin on it, on the ball that I want. Obviously, the more you want to hook it, the more you tow it in. The less I want to hook it, the straighter you keep your club face. Very simple. We don't want to confuse the game of golf. The game of golf is very confusing as it is because there's so many different parts that we've got to understand. So if we can keep this art of maneuvering the golf ball down to a simple form, you're going to get yourself out of trouble a lot easier. So I'm going to go through the routine again. Remember, think of the object you want to go around. How much hook do you want to put on the ball? OK, we need to put about 45, 50 feet of hook on this shot. Put the golf club where you want the ball to finish. Your club face is aiming at that point vis-a-vis -vis the flag. I want my body to aim around the trouble, which is the tree. So I aim at the chimney. From there, I take my normal grip, normal stance, and without changing anything, I'm going to go ahead and hit it, and you'll see what happens. The ball will hook around the object. Very simple procedure. Now, let me touch on something just a little bit before we leave the hook shot, is if you're going to hook the ball, remember you're going to make the ball go further because your club face is getting loft taken off it. The more you tow it in, the less loft you have on the golf club. So let's say this shot here was about 145 yards. Well, yeah, that's normally an 8-iron off his regular shot. So what I've done is I'll take a 9-iron or even a pitching wedge because it's going to tow in. It's going to make the ball go further. Keep that in your mind. That's the only thing you want to think about, or you, the equation you're trying to work out, the relationship between the closed club face and the distance to the ball. The other point, don't try and land the ball near the flag. Let it land short, because it's going to have a top spin roll, and it's going to roll a little bit further. So trying to, the art of move, maneuvering the ball from right to left is basically easy. Don't change anything in your golf game. Just change your club face. OK. We've had our hook shot. We had to get the ball around the tree from right to left. Now we've got to talk about getting the ball left to right around the tree. Same principle. Think of the basketball, the spinning motion of the basketball going from left to right. That's the idea of what we've got to get on the golf ball. We've got to spin the golf ball left to right to get it to go around our object. Now, from your living room right there, imagine right over the golf ball that imaginary plane once again. To impart that left to right spin on it, I have to bring the golf club across that plane coming this way to put the left to right spin. So that's what we're going to do. Now, coming across the line is going to seem like we're really cutting it, but in actual fact, we're not. Remember, our body is aiming there, so all we're going to do is open the club face up. Remember the hook shot? We closed it. The slice shot, we're going to open it up. So here we go. Slice shot. Take one less club, maybe even two less clubs. Go back to the hook shot. Remember, for a 145-yard shot, I went down to a 9-iron, sometimes even a pitching wedge. Well, for the same length shot, this time I've gone to a 5-iron. The reason? Here's my normal address position right here. The more I open the club, the more loft I put on it. Obviously, the more loft I put on it, the less distance it's going to go. Point number two. With the left to right shot, you're going to generate more backspin because the club head is coming more across the ball and more abruptly down on top of it, creating a little bit more backspin. Therefore, we're not going to get the run we got with the hook shot. We're going to get that ball to land and spin to the right. It's not going to go forward. It's going to basically stay the same distance to where it lands. So remember, go to a, lot more long, a longer club. The more you open it up, the more loft you put on it. The more loft you put on it, the less distance. OK, now all we do is the same principle. Remember, we never changed our grip or our swing or anything for the hook shot. Same deal with the slice. We set the target where we want the ball to finish, on the flag down there. Don't take my eyes off it. I'm not moving the club face, keeping it there. 
I'm going to go down the shaft a little bit right now because I feel a fraction uncomfortable being a full length five iron for a 145 yard shot. So I'm going to go down my shaft because that's only my personal comfort. It might not work for you. So you, whatever you feel comfortable with, do it. Get that club face on line with where you want the ball to finish. Now this is going to take us around this big pine tree and onto the green. Execute your same swing, same motion, nice fluid, full swing, and don't think about anything else but rhythm. And we got ourselves out of trouble once again. Another factor about the art of maneuvering the golf ball is the low shot. Let's say we're in a situation where we can't go around the tree, we can't go left, we can't go right, we can't go over. But we do have a little bit of an opening underneath. Anytime you're in the trees and all the other variables are, have been eliminated, like the hook shot, the low shot, the high shot, just take a look in the trees. Now remember, trees are 60, 70% air. So just look for gaps. Look for a little hole somewhere down low underneath the tree and punch the, punch the ball below the tree. Keep it low. Very, very simple procedure to go through that. Again, we're going to talk about the art of keeping the ball low. Now, to keep the ball low, we just make a few minor changes to our ball position. We're not going to go and get all technical about this now. We just want to keep the ball low. First of all, we want to have a look how low the tree is, how far we've got to hit the ball, and whether there's trouble in front of the green. If there's trouble in front of the green, obviously we can't really run the ball onto the green. We have to sort of play away from it. Just chip it out onto the edge of the fairway or in the middle of the fairway. Now, remember how I always said ball position, same place for a full shot? Well, we've got to deviate from that right now. To keep the ball a little bit low, we're going to move it back in our stance just a little bit. You notice I moved my left foot. I didn't move my ball body up here like this. I took my normal stance and just moved my left foot a little closer to the target. OK, depending on the length of the shot, depends on how long a backswing you take. This shot here just requires a nice sort of three-quarter swing. Firm, take the club back three-quarters to about here, stop, and then come down. Now, when you're coming down, because of the ball position's a little further back in your stance, that means your center of gravity's forward. With your center of gravity forward, your body weight is going to be a little bit like 60% on your left foot, because we don't want to have our center of gravity behind the ball, or we'll elevate it too quickly. So what we do is move our center of gravity ahead of the ball. Again, ball back in my stance a little bit, weight a little bit on my left side. Now, forget about the trouble. All you got to do is think about the target. If you start thinking about the limbs hanging down, that's going to be your last thought in your mind. The last thought in your mind is what's going to happen to the ball. You're probably going to hit the limb. Or the tree left or the tree right. Think of the flag. The last thought in your mind, the ball's going to go towards the flag. Take our ball position. We're looking at the flag, club face address straight on. Our posture is good, our balance is good. We've got a little bit of weight on our left side. Now all we're going to do is take that three-quarter swing. Very simple. Don't think of the trouble. Think of the end result, and that's the flag. And you'll get it out every time. All right, we've done our low shot. Now all of a sudden, we've got to play the high shot. Tricky situation. No option except to go over. Tree's too low, can't punch it. You can't go around it because there's other trees as well. So we have to go over. Very simple procedure. Remember in the low shot, we're talking about the center of gravity and your weight distribution. Well, it's just the opposite for the high shot. We're going to, instead of a punch shot, which was this way, leaning forward, the high shot, we have to get the center of gravity behind the ball. Once we're behind the ball, the club face can do its own work then. It's going to follow its natural arc and that start coming up as it meets the ball. If the club face is coming up, you're going to get a lot of elevation. Right, so the way we've got to go about this, very simple, very basic. Ball position, just a little further forward in your stance. Remember normal stance, we had it off our left heel. This time we're going to move it off our instep. You're only going to move it maybe a three quarters of an inch to an inch. Don't move it anymore because then you're going to start hitting the ball in the middle on the way up and that means it's going to go low and that's what we don't want. Get the ball just three quarters of an inch up on your stance. That'll bring your center of gravity back to about here. It's going to move it back maybe two or three inches. The higher you want to hit it, the more you get your center of gravity back. For example, if I want to hit an extremely high shot with an iron, 
I'm going to get my weight back here on my right heel. I'm going to get my rump down lower to my right side. That'll create my swing to be even a more exaggerated upswing motion. The lower you get your right rump and the weight on the rear heel of your, of your right foot, the higher you're going to hit the shot. So just remember, ball a little further forward in your stance, get your nice even balance, your center of gravity is going to move back. While your center of gravity is back, just think of height. The higher you want to hit it, the more you do this. Just bring your weight down on your right heel and on your right rump. Then you just go ahead and execute a nice, smooth, full swing. No abbreviated backswing like the, the low shot we're hitting. No abbreviated follow through. It's got to be a full swing because you want the club head to pick the ball up and take it over the tree. One final thing, look at the top of the tree. You see that brown dead branch on top of the tree? That's going to be my last visual point before I look down to the ball. So we look up. See that spot? That's my target. It's a little bit further left of the flag, which is good because it's going to compensate because our center of gravity is a little back behind the ball. We're going to have a tendency to pull the ball just a fraction, which is OK. So my brown spot is my last visual spot that I look at. Concentrate on the ball. Forget about everything else and go ahead and hit. Notice one thing, no divot. Because we weren't hitting down on the ball, we were sweeping the ball off the surface, the club face was on the way up at impact. If you take a divot, you're not going to hit it high enough. Well, here's a situation that is very common to all of us. Touring pro, golf professional, anybody, the rough. We're going to hit it offline every now and then, and sometimes we're going to find ourselves in very, very deep rough. How do we get out of it? couple of different ways we can do it. Let's just think for a minute what's going to happen to the golf ball. And I want to explain to you, remember we were talking about the, when we maneuvered the ball, what happened with the spin on the ball from right to left and left to right? Let me show you what's going to happen when you obviously play it and everybody says, oh, I've hit a flyer or a spitter, sometimes they call it. Let me show you what happens to a flyer. Let's get down here into the grass. And here we got an enlarged golf ball just to, to demonstrate a little bit better. We zero in here, the ball is sitting in front of this piece of grass. What it causes a flyer is when the club face comes into the ball at impact, see all that grass you have between the club face and ball? What happens then is it's going to eliminate the grooves on the golf club. These grooves are going to fill up with grass. And what happens then is you're not going to get any traction between the ball and the club face. Consequently, no backspin. No backspin. There's no resistance through the air. No backspin, no elevation. So what happens is the ball gets a fly. It's like a knuckleball in baseball, for example. It just comes out there and just sort of goes at one sort of angle, and that's it. Another thing the flyer effect will do is make the ball go a lot further. Again, when I mention backspin, backspin is resistance. The resistance through the air is what makes the ball drop. With the flyer, the ball doesn't want to drop. It just wants to keep going and going and going. So let me just demonstrate and talk about the technique of getting it out. <clears throat> what we do is we've analyzed the situation. We know we've got a suspect flyer, so we're going to play for it. I've got about maybe 200 yards here. Now, 200 yards from me, I can hit a 7 iron out of here, and I'm still going to get the distance. What we're going to do is we're going to play the ball back in our stance a little bit because we want to hit down on the ball. We want the club face to come down on this angle. The reason why is we're trying to eliminate that grass between the club face and ball as much as we can. So the downward motion of the club face is going to do that. It's going to act like a knife cutting through butter. It's going to come straight through there, down into the ball, and you're going to sort of less push the grass away from the ball. If you come in with a sweeping motion, you're pulling the grass into the ball. We don't want that. We want that downward motion. So we play our ball back in our stance a little bit. Another thing you want to think of doing is open your stance a little bit. Remember I said we want this downward motion of the club face? By opening our stance, we're going to sort of create a chopping motion, just like a bunker shot. We're going to get that club head coming down behind the ball, and you can get out of the way a lot quicker. Another reason is we want the club face to be a little bit open at address position. 
Now, I don't want to confuse you here, but this is a very important point because what happens is the hosel...